Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am VC Pramod and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says that the last eight years have seen unprecedented development in the Northeast. President Ramnath Kovind arrives in Bengaluru for a two-day visit to the state to inaugurate the Platinum Jubilee celebrations of the Rashtriya Military School this evening. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal calls upon WTO to send strong message to rich to care for the poor, vulnerable and marginalized people. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi appears before the Enforcement Directorate in Delhi in the National Herald case. Senior BJP leader Smriti Irani says Congress leaders have taken to the streets to pressurize an investigating agency. Indian Metrological Department predicts heat wave conditions to continue in Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and southeast Uttar Pradesh for the next two days. Kelo India Youth Games to conclude at Panchkula in Haryana. In medal tally, Haryana regains leading position followed by Maharashtra and Karnataka. And in cricket, third 2020 international of the five-match series between India and South Africa to be played in Vishakhapatnam tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the last eight years have seen unprecedented development in the Northeast. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said the focus is on infrastructure creation, ensuring better health care, education and popularizing the rich cultures from the different states of the region. From better roads to much-needed bridges, from airports to trains, when it comes to connectivity, India's northeastern region has witnessed significant changes in the last eight years under Prime Minister Narendra Modi. President Ramnath Kovind has arrived in Bengaluru today for a two-day official visit to the state. He will participate in the Platinum Jubilee celebrations of the Rashtriya Military School in Bengaluru later in the day. The military school was started by the British in 1946. The Platinum Jubilee celebration will go on for three days after its inauguration in the presence of the President today. During the inaugural event, Governor Thawarchand Gehlot, Chief Minister Basavaraj Bommai, State ministers and senior officers from the armed forces will be present. Tomorrow, the President will grace the dedication ceremony of the Iskon Temple a Republica of the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam at Vaikunt Hill in Bengaluru. The deity in the temple is Raja Di Raja Sri Govinda, which means the Lord is the King of Kings. After the event, the President is scheduled to leave for Delhi in the afternoon tomorrow. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goel has said that when the world is facing severe challenges and expects the WTO to deliver solutions, the 12th Ministerial Conference must send a strong message that the rich care for the poor, vulnerable and marginalized people. Mr. Goel said this in Geneva at the Ministerial Meeting of the G33 at the 12th WTO Ministerial Conference. तीव्रता से बढ़ती खाद्य पदार्थों की महंगाई ने आज एक वैश्विक मानवीय संकट का रूप ले लिया है जो कि गहरी चिंता का विषय है और हमें खाद्य उत्पादन के लिए घरेलू क्षमताओं को बढ़ावा देने के महत्व की याद दिलाता है खाद्य पदार्थों की बढ़ती कीमतें लाखों लोगों के अस्तित्व को खतरे में डाल रही है और गरीब और कमजोर देश और उनके लोगों को इन परफेक्ट मार्केट के अधीन कर रही है हमारा सामूहिक व नैतिक दायित्व यह सुनिश्चित करना है कि विश्व में कभी भी कोई व्यक्ति भूखा न सोए और डब्ल्यूटीओ के नियम इस लक्ष्य में सहभागी होने चाहिए Mr. Goel said India reiterates Prime Minister Narendra Modi's clarion call for sustainable living through lifestyle for environment, life, a movement aimed at promoting environment conscious lifestyle, focusing on mindful and deliberate utilization. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi today appeared before the Enforcement Directorate in Delhi in the National Herald case. He was accompanied by sister and party leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra. Mr. Gandhi reached the Enforcement Directorate office after Satyagraha march with hundreds of workers and party leaders. Early in the day, the Delhi police detained many Congress workers as they protested outside the AICC headquarters in support of Rahul Gandhi. Almost the entire top leadership of the Congress, the party's two chief ministers, Ashok Gehlot and Bhupesh Baghel, and its Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha MPs staged a protest, along with workers holding placards and shouting slogans from the AICC headquarters to the ED office. Delhi police have tightened security in the national capital. 
Union Minister and BJP leader Smriti Irani today said Congress leaders have taken to the streets to pressurize an investigating agency openly because their corruption has been exposed. Addressing a press conference in New Delhi, Ms. Irani said it is an attempt to protect the assets of the Gandhi family. जो जेल से बेल पर है उन्होंने घोषणा की है कि आओ दिल्ली को घेरो क्योंकि हमारा भ्रष्टाचार पकड़ा गया है एक इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग एजेंसी पर दबाव डालने के लिए कांग्रेस शासित राज्यों के वरिष्ठ नेताओं को विशेष आमंत्रित किया गया है कांग्रेस की इस रणनीति को आप क्या नाम देंगे In reply to a question on ED probe against Rahul Gandhi in National Herald case she said the spokesperson of the investigative agency can throw more light on that with the aim to connect the youth with more opportunities of on ground training within corporates and further a chance to get employment Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship will organize the Pradhan Mantri National Apprenticeship Mela every month from now on. Today the mela will be organized from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The PM National Apprenticeship Mela will take place across more than 200 locations in the country. More than 1000 companies from across more than 36 sectors will participate in the mela providing opportunities of being hired as an apprentice within companies. individuals having a 5th to 12th grade pass certificate a skill training certificate and iti diploma or a graduate degree can apply for an interview across these trades or opportunities the candidates will be given a choice of more than 500 trades including welders electricians housekeepers beauticians mechanics and others the primary goal of this program is to encourage the hiring of apprentices from these cities as well as to assist employers in identifying and developing their potential through training and practical skill sets bringing value to their workplace prime minister narendra modi has thanked the people of karbi anglong for the continuous faith in the bjp and assured them that bjp will keep working for assam's progress in a tweet mr modi said the results in karbi anglong are historic He said the efforts of the BJP Karyakartas have been outstanding. Kudos to them. Home Minister Amit Shah has said that the people of Karbi have unwavering faith in Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In a tweet, Mr. Shah said from the historic Karbi Anglong Agreement to giving the people their due rights, Mr. Modi made unprecedented efforts towards the development of the region. He said BJP's clean sweep in Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council polls is a testament to the same. On this landslide victory Mr Shah congratulated party president JP Nadda chief minister Himanta Biswa Sharma Assam BJP president Bhabesh Kalita karyakartas of Assam BJP and the allies he assured people of Karbi that BJP under the leadership of prime minister Narendra Modi will remain committed towards the peace and progress of the region Law and Justice Minister Kiran Rijeju is in Mongolia with four holy relics of Lord Buddha for a 11-day exposition as part of celebrations of Mongolian Buddha Purnima tomorrow. The holy relics will be displayed at the Batsagan Temple within the premises of the Gandhan Monastery. Mr Rijeju said this will give a message of peace to the world. He said the friendship between India and Mongolia is very old. Mr Rijeju said the bond between both the countries have become very strong after Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Mongolia in 2015. विशेष प्रतिमंडल दल यहाँ पहुंचे हैं मंगोलिया में बुद्ध का संदेश लेकर के वैसे ही हमारे आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी भी जो भी वो कूटनीति करते हैं वो शांति के रास्ते पर बुद्ध के बताए हुए रास्ते पर और विश्व को कैसे शांति के पथ पर चलना चाहिए इसी सोच के साथ करते हैं तो आज जितना भी देश आप देख रहे हैं कहीं कुछ चुनौतियां हैं कहीं गड़बड़ हो रहे हैं कहीं लड़ाई हो रहे हैं ऐसे समय में भारत का जो रोल है वो बहुत अहम हो जाता है The Odisha Vidhan Sabha today elected Bikram Kesari Aruk as its new speaker. In a special session of the assembly today, Shri Aruk was elected unopposed through a voice vote. A few days earlier, the then speaker of the house Dr. Surya Narayan Patro had given his resignation from the post. The polling for biennial elections to the four seats of Karnataka Legislative Council is progressing smoothly in the state today. The polling will be held till 5 p.m. in the Northwest and South Graduates constituencies and Northwest and West Teachers constituencies. The teachers and registered graduates of the constituencies are voting to elect their representatives in the upper house. The ruling BJP and the opposition Congress have fielded one candidate each of, of the four constituencies and JDS has fielded its candidates 
in three constituencies, excluding North West Graduates constituency. There are 49 candidates in Frey and there are 284,922 registered voters in 607 polling stations in four constituencies. The counting of votes will be taken up on Wednesday. Over 195 crore 19 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive. The health ministry said over 11 lakh 77,000 doses were administered yesterday. The recovery rate is currently at 98.68%. 8,084 new cases were recorded and 4,592 people recovered in the last 24 hours. In this active caseload currently stands at 47,995. 10 deaths reported in the last 24 hours. The union government has said that fortified rice will be distributed in 291 aspirational and high burden districts across the country through public distribution system in 2022-23. Briefing reporters in New Delhi, Food Secretary Sudhanshu Pandey said the government has planned to provide 175 lakh metric tons of fortified rice during this phase. He said the focus will be on to cover all integrated child development services centers, PM portion and midday schools. More than 90 districts in 16 states have started lifting fortified rice. In the first phase during 2021-22, around 17 lakh metric tons of fortified rice have been distributed under ICDS and PM portion. Rice fortification is a process of adding micronutrients like iron, folic acid and vitamin B12 is an effective, preventive and cost-efficient complementary strategy to address the challenge of anemia. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had made an announcement on the 75th Independence Day last year to mandate rice fortification in all social safety net schemes by 2024. According to FSSAI, India loses about 1% of GDP, over 2 lakh crore rupees per year due to iron deficiency anemia. You were listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says that the last eight years have seen unprecedented development in the Northeast. President Ramnath Kovind arrives in Bangalore for a two-day visit to the state to inaugurate the Platinum Jubilee celebrations of the Rashtra Military School this evening. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goel calls upon WTO to send a strong message to rich to care for poor, vulnerable and marginalized people. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi appears before the Enforcement Directorate in Delhi in the National Herald case. Senior BGP leader Smriti Rani says Congress leaders have taken to the streets to pressurize an investigating agency. In the meteorological department predicts heat wave conditions to continue in Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and Southeast Uttar Pradesh for the next two days. Khelo India Youth Games to conclude at Panchkula in Haryana. In medals tally, Haryana regains leading position followed by Maharashtra and Karnataka. In cricket, third 2020 international of the five-match series between India and South Africa to be played in Vishagapatnam tomorrow. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. क्या आप कंपटीटिव एग्जाम्स की तैयारी कर रहे हैं? आपके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो लाया है प्रोग्राम अभ्यास. एक ऐसा प्रोग्राम जहां आप सवाल भेजते हैं WhatsApp नंबर 9829094044 या फिर ईमेल करते हैं अभ्यास डॉट ए आई आर न्यूज एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम आरोप आपके सवालों के जवाब हमारे एक्सपर्ट देते हैं शनिवार रात साढ़े नौ बजे इस बार का विषय है इंडियन सोसाइटी भारतीय समाज और सवाल भेजने की अंतिम तारीख है पंद्रह जून आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास महिलाओं के विकास में भागीदार भारत सरकार देश में पीएम आवास की अड़सठ प्रतिशत मालिक महिलाएं हैं 35 करोड़ मुद्रा लोन लाभार्थियों में से 23 करोड़ महिलाएं हैं देश ने संकल्प लिया है शत प्रतिशत लाभार्थियों तक पहुंचने का आठ साल सेवा सुशासन गरीब कल्याण वेलकम बैक टू द मिड डे न्यूज Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said that India never wants war with any country and to date has not encroached upon the land of any other country. India believes in the spirit of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, but Indian forces are always ready to defend borders of the country. 
speaking at the joint civil military training program held at the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration Masuri today Mr Singh said that defense equipment is largely being manufactured in the country itself in the future india need not depend on other countries to procure defense equipment मुझे ये कहते हुए खुशी होती है कि चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस स्टाफ पद का भी हम लोगों ने सृजन किया है डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मिलिट्री अफेयर्स की भी स्थापना हुई है और सिविल और मिलिट्री के भी ज्वाइंटनेस की प्रोसेस डिफेंस मिनिस्ट्री द्वारा फुल फ्लेज रूप में शुरू की जा चुकी है और आप आश्वस्त रहिएगा कि हमारे तीनों सर्विसेज के बीच आर्मी नेवी एयरफोर्स इनके बीच ज्वाइंटनेस हम लाकर ही कम देंगे और यह कदम हमारे देश के फुल स्केल वार के लिए भी फ्यूचर रेडी करने में मददगार साबित होगा ऐसा मेरा विश्वास है Indian Meteorological Department has predicted that heat wave conditions is likely to continue in isolated places over Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and southeast Uttar Pradesh during the next two days. Talking exclusively to AIA News, senior scientist in IMD R K Jenamani said that there will be no major heat wave from the 16th of this month over Punjab, Haryana and Delhi. The heat wave condition is still continuing over national capital Delhi and the uh, adjoining areas of Punjab and Haryana. Major part of India is now heat wave free. Madhya Pradesh has already uh, reported pre monsoon thunderstorm and temperature are down now 41 42. Also, Vidarbha is not having any heat wave. Now, prediction is that because of the easterly wind at the lower level and uh, pre monsoon thunderstorm starting from 16th, so these Punjab, Haryana, Delhi may have a heat wave for today and tomorrow. And from 16th June, the heat wave. is going to update actually that means there will be no major heat wave spell for this summer 2022 from 16th june onward In Jammu and Kashmir the Union Territory Administration is running a unique program to enhance transparency in the land records maintenance system the initiative aapki zameen aapki nigrani azan is aimed at facilitating easy online access to the system to view or monitor the status of revenue records Citizens no longer need to visit the offices for obtaining information about the land. Azan has empowered them to check the land records on CIS portal landrecords.jk.gov.in. The initiative is part of Digital India Land Records Modernisation Program (DILRMP). Talking to AI News, Abid Hussain, a resident of Kulgam district, said he accessed all the details of his land on the portal. एक्चुअल मैं आरफन हूँ मैंने अपनी जमीन की तमाम डिटेल इससे हासिल की है डिस्ट्रिक्ट कुलगाम के बाहर जो लोग ये सुन रहे हैं मैं उनको बताना चाहता हूँ कि जिनकी जमीन है वो इस पोर्टल के जरिए अपनी जमीन की निगरानी देख सकते हैं अपनी जमीन का स्टेटस देख सकते हैं ये हमारे यूटी गवर्नमेंट का बहुत बड़ा इनिशिएटिव है इससे बहुत बड़ा फायदा मिलता है अकॉर्डिंग टू ऑफिशियल डेटा सेवन पॉइंट सेवन जीरो पेजेस ऑफ रेवन्यू रिकॉर्ड एंड फिफ्टी फाइव थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटीन मुसावी मैप्स पार्ट ऑफ द आजान इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इन द यूनियन टेरिटरी दिस थ्री थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड नाइन्टी फाइव ग्राउंड कंट्रोल पॉइंट एब्लिस्ड एंड वेब बेस्ड एंटरप्राइज जियो इन्फॉर्मेशन सिस्टम जी आई एस डिवेलप्ड अंडर द प्रोग्राम इन ऑर्डर टू फॉर द बूस्ट ट्रांसपेरेंस इन पब्लिक डीलिंग्स ऑफ द रेवन्यू डिपार्टमेंट a mechanism of issuing passbooks to people containing information on all the legal land possessions has been evolved the ut administration has said the 15th of august is the deadline for completion of the process srinagar district magistrate mohammad azaz asad said the administration has already distributed land passbooks to all the households in the city srinagar is the first district perhaps in the country to achieve 100% coverage under swam mitra scheme people have now property card or they hold property cards and that also makes them eligible for obtaining banking loans and has also led to reduction in the land disputes in the revenue courts other than that we have also distributed land pass books to all the households in district srinagar and now let's listen to a special program azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव आजादी का सफर विद ए आई आर न्यूज बर्फ ऑफ अ नेशन इंडिया ग्लोरियस फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट स्ट्रगल्स द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड हैज एवर विटनेस ए आई आर न्यूज ब्रिंग्स यू अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द स्ट्रगल एवरी डे It was on the 13th of June 1943 that Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose arrived 
from Germany to Tokyo and declared his intention of ending British rule in the subcontinent. He aimed to attack the eastern regions of India and to this end, Netaji went to Singapore on the 2nd of July. <laughs> In October 1943, at the famous Cathay Cinema Hall in Singapore, Subhash Chandra Bose formally announced establishment of the Provisional Government of Free India. Metaji declared, It will be the task of the Provisional Government to launch and conduct the struggle that will bring about the expulsion of the British and their allies from the soil of India. The Provisional Government of Free India gave a clarion call for independence and emboldened the brave freedom fighters to rise against the then British Empire with more gusto and courage. The activities of the Indian National Army under the leadership of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose shook the foundation of the British Empire. We remember Gandhian freedom fighter Narut Nath who was martyred on the 13th of June, 1930. A resident of District Surat, Gujarat, Narutanath took part in the Dharasana Salt Satyagraha in May, 1930. During the Salt Satyagraha in 1930, when Gandhiji decided on a raid of the Dharasana Salt Works, he wrote to the Viceroy, Lord Irvin, and told him about his plan. Gandhiji was arrested on the 4th of May 1930 and was detained without trial near Pune. However, the Dharasana Satyagraha went ahead as decided and planned by Gandhiji, with Abbas Tayyabji, a 76 years old retired judge, leading the march with Kasturba Gandhi at his side. Both Abbas Tayyabji and Kasturba Gandhi were also arrested before reaching Dharasana and sentenced to three months imprisonment. After their arrests, the Satyagrahis continued the march under the leadership of Sarojini Naidu who warned them. You must not use any violence under any circumstance. You will be beaten, but you must not resist. You must not even raise a hand to ward off blows. The armed forces clubbed the Satyagrahis with steel-tipped lathis on the 22nd of May, 1930. A large number of Satyagrahis were injured badly, including Narutanath, who died of his injuries on the 13th of June, 1930. We salute the great martyr. We also remember independence activist Gunisi Singh, who took part in the First War of Independence in 1857. Initially, Gunisi Singh used to serve the English East India Company Army, but left it during the uprising of 1857 and took part in attacking the British establishments on various occasions. Singh also motivated his fellow sepoys to turn their arms on the British and overthrow their oppressive rule. While fighting against the British, he was caught and charged with desertion and mutiny against the British authorities. Gunesi Singh was sentenced to transportation for life. He was sent from Bombay to the Andaman Islands in April 1858 and died there in captivity on the 13th of June 1858. We salute the great martyr. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. The closing ceremony of Kelo India Youth Games will be held at Indra Dhanush Auditorium Panchkula this evening. The Youth Games hosted by Haryana this time have seen various competitions held at five locations including Panchkula, Ambala, Chandigarh, Delhi and Shahabad. 
In the closing ceremony, Haryana Governor Bandaru Dattatreya will be Chief Guest, while Chief Minister Manohar Lal and Union Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports Anurag Thakur will attend the ceremony as guests of honour. In the Kelo India Youth Games, Haryana retained leading position in the medal tally with 43 gold, 36 silver and 43 bronze medals. Haryana has so far grabbed 122 medals. Maharashtra is at second position with 112 medals including 43 gold, 36 silver and 33 bronze medals. Karnataka remained at third place with 22 gold, 17 silver and 25 bronze medals. In cricket, the third 2020 international of the five-match series between India and South Africa will be played in Vishakhapatnam tomorrow. Being defeated in the first two matches in Delhi and Katak, it will be a do-or-die encounter for India, as the win will keep them alive in the series, while another defeat will mean the loss of the series. Last night, South Africa took a 2-0 lead in the series, defeating the host by four wickets at the Barabati Stadium in Katak. Today is the 117th birth anniversary of legendary cricketer, K. S. Dilip Singh Ji, born on the 13th of June 1905, he was an Indian batsman who played 12 tests for England. Dilip was considered one of the finest batsmen of his time, but had to give up playing due to health issues. A tribute from the news desk. Dilip was born in a royal family of Saurashtra and was the nephew of K. S. Ranji Singh Ji. Dilip went to England to establish his cricket career and became a regular in the Sussex team in the mid-1920s and served them with distinction until 1932. He went on to captain them in his last season, that is 1932. His career was a masterpiece in miniature. His cricketing days lasted all of eight seasons only. In this short span, he scored 50 centuries in first-class cricket just Tests were grazed by his silken elegance before failing. Health stopped him first from venturing to Australia for the infamous 1932-33 series and then from playing cricket altogether. In those dozen outings, he scored five runs short of a thousand at an average of 58.52 with three splendid hundreds that were crafted with the platonic ideal of cricketing stock play. India have named their zonal tournament after him. With Pratyush Ghosh's report, Vargis PV, AAR News. Today is International Albinism Awareness Day. The day is observed to bring about awareness among the people for the prevention of attacks and discrimination against persons with albinism and also about the rights of people with albinism. The theme for the International Albinism Awareness Day this year is United in Making a Voice Heard. Now let's take a look at the weather update for the day. The national capital Delhi is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The minimum temperature was 32 degrees while maximum will be around 43 degrees. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Minimum was 25 degrees. Maximum will be around 33 degrees. Chennai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Minimum temperature was 27 degrees Celsius while maximum will be around 39 degrees. Kolkata is likely to have partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. Temperature will hover between 27 and 35 degrees Celsius. Srinagar is expected to have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Minimum temperature was 16 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 28 degrees. In Muzaffarabad, minimum temperature was 22 degrees Celsius while maximum will be around 41 degrees. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says that the last eight years have seen unprecedented development in the Northeast. President Ramnath Kovind arrives in Bengaluru for a two-day visit to the state to inaugurate the Platinum Jubilee celebrations of the Rashtriya Military School this evening. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal calls upon WTO to send strong message to rich to care for the poor, vulnerable and marginalized people. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi appears before the Enforcement Directorate in Delhi in the National Herald case. Senior BJP leader Smithy Rani says Congress leaders have taken to the streets to pressurize an investigative agency. Indian Meteorological Department predicts heat wave conditions to continue in Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and Southeast Uttar Pradesh for the next two days. Kelo India Youth Games to conclude at Panchkula and Haryana. In medal tally, Haryana regains leading position followed by Maharashtra and Karnataka. And in cricket, third 2020 international of the five-match series between India and South Africa to be played in Vishakhapatnam tomorrow. 
and with that we end the midday news